This is a quick overview of Sterling PDF. And by overview, I mean I don't know anything about it yet other than I installed it on a Docker container on a virtual private server that I have, that I own. And um, it's kind of cool so far uh, just reading about it. I haven't really tested it out, but my hope is to replace the need to ever use Adobe Acrobat Standard or even Adobe Acrobat Pro. So introduction to Sterling PDF. This is a free application. It's open source. It's, I think it's on GitHub. It's a, it's a rebust. There's, there's quite a few spelling mistakes on the site, but that's fine. They can code better than I can. So, <laughs> um, Sterling PDF is a robust, locally hosted, web-based PDF manipulation platform powered by Docker. And you could just run it on your um, local computer if you wanted to run it on a Docker container on your local computer, by the way. But it's a little more involved than just installing it like you would in a Windows application. But they are big on privacy, and they're always improving it. It's, it's um, you know, sec security is a big thing with them. And you can secure PDFs, which, you know, you could do that with Acrobat as well. But, again, this is free, and you're not, you know, selling data or telemetry, giving all that stuff to Adobe. But you can see all these features right here. It lists that what it can do. It's a lot of things. And there's there's even a demo online. You can check it out. Um, oh, it's actually not live. They have a button to go to a demo, but... I forgot that it says that it will go here eventually. That's right. I tried this yesterday, and I should have remembered that it's actually not live. But you can make it live in your environment. You can install it on your computer, like I said, or a virtual private server. I recommend a virtual private server, namely CloudRon. CloudRon is super easy to set up apps on a virtual private server. It's free for two apps. So if you have a virtual private server you know, in the cloud that you're just test running, maybe Akami, which is um, Linode. That's a good free one where you can try out a you know $100 credit for a month or something like that. You could install CloudRon on that and then run it and install the app and just try it in the browser. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Here's my self-hosted domain. This is under my randyhanley.com domain. And this is what Sterling PDF looks like. Now, there's no authentication. There's no login for it other than your CloudRound account. So you can't have like a multi-user environment for PDF management or anything like that. This is for you to just use as your own PDF manipulation tool. So this is really cool because what I've done is, let me bring up a window on the other screen so I can just drag stuff if I need to. I have two dummy PDFs that I downloaded from the internet so that it's just something I can edit. But if you see this, all these little rectangles, there's a ton of things it can do. It's more things than I usually think about doing with Adobe. And I have access to all the Adobe tools, and I try to not use them if I don't have to. So we got a PDF multi-tool. It can do, you know, like bulk tasks, I guess. <laughs> or it's just grouped under here. I haven't tried it, other than I've tried a couple of these um, features individually. Let's see what the multi-tool is. You can favorite it, it looks like. That's cool. So merge, rotate, rearrange, remove pages. That's, I've done a lot of that with Adobe. So if I click that, you can now, oh, you can kind of look add the page here. And um, that's interesting. So let's upload a file. Let's try that. We're going to take a local file I have here and drag it to the screen. This is a test PDF. And there is a page from it. Let's take a second page. Oh, that's so cool. So it automatically like fans them out how many pages it has. And boy, that is fast. Again, this is a remote server. This is not on my local computer. It did that so fast. So now you can like rotate that page. That is so cool. And it's actually really smooth. And then you can just, I'm assuming, download it the way you have it laid out. This is very intuitive and... I mean, it's actually easier than Adobe for rearranging pages. I don't have all the annoying menu remappings. They change the menus in Adobe. I guess they're more touch-friendly, but you can go back to the classic view. This is just right here in front of me. I like this. It's, um, what's that website called? Oh, there's, a, there's a PDF, pdfescape.com or something, which is a great site. I love it. But again, it's not something I own. I don't know what's happening with the data. This is mine. This is my server. This is my data. 
I can erase the server in five seconds if I'm afraid that my social security number is on it or something. I don't know. I can just, you know, I can do whatever I want. But anyways, that's a really cool tool. And I can just click download and then boom, it downloads it to my computer. And that's pretty easy. So that's a manipulated PDF. Now we're going to go back by clicking the Sterling PDF logo, I guess, up here. And you can merge PDF documents. Let's do something that's a little cooler. Let's do PDF to image. That's kind of cool because I'm not going to maybe screenshot it, but I'm just going to convert it to an image. So let's see if I can drag and drop here. Very cool. It still lets you do it. It doesn't make it completely obvious at first. Like I would just think that I'd have to click browse, but I just take the PDF and drag it here and it works. It puts it right. It populates the path. That's very cool. So now I can download it in JPEG, PNG, or GIF, or GIF. I'll say it for both of you. Like anybody that likes to say GIF or GIF, if you like peanut butter, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Single big image, multiple images. So you can split it if it's multiple pages, I guess, and convert. Let's see what it does. It says processing, and we're going to see how long this takes. And then it downloads. That is so cool. I love it. Okay, let's go back to the front page, if I the one-stop shop. And we can do HTML to PDF, which, okay, you can print a page and print to a PDF already on most browsers, right? But maybe they render it differently. I don't know. I'm not going to try that now, but Markdown to PDF, that's pretty cool. I do have Markdown files. That's how I edit my website. Auto rename a PDF based on its detected header. That is cool. That is very... So if you had a little system, like a filing system, you know, that you organized, maybe that's going to be your workflow. This could be really useful. So let's take this and see if it detects any headers. And auto rename. <laughs> it actually went in the document and grabbed it. That is so cool. That was very fast. So far, I'm very impressed. I mean, can you complain about free either? This is so cool. Um, adds an image to a set location on a PDF. I don't have an image to mess with, but so you could take the PDF and you can add image. So you browse and two files selected and you can just drag it where you want and then download it. That is cool. It's like editing the PDF without really being active inside of the PDF. I am just blown away by this tool. This is really cool. Uh, show JavaScript. Let's see. And I apologize. I don't have this prep. This is not a scripted video, obviously. I just wanted to record myself using it for the first time, you know, more than trying one or two things. Remove blank pages. That is very powerful. Maybe you have an ebook that's written or converted to PDF and you have tons of pages and there's like a couple blank ones in there that are just, you know, you just, it just it's just a pet peeve of yours or it's just a a little thing you just can't stand, I guess. I, I don't want to say OCD because that's, that's a little extreme, but, uh, you know, it's just something you don't like and you want the book to be efficient. You want every page to have text on it. There you go. Upload the book and run this thing. And you can flatten it. That means remove all the inter interactive, maybe like forms and stuff like that. You can remove it to make it more efficient and just, you know, text. Uh, anything here? PDF to Word is very interesting. Wow. Let me see how, let me see if that works. We'll see how it works. And you can do a doc, doc X, okay. An ODT, that's the open document, I think, like open office or LibreOffice, one of the two. Convert, and let's see how fast it downloads a Word file. Wow, that is fast. And there we go. Wow, wow, wow. That's a Word document. That is so cool. A lot of people could use this. Let's see what else we got. Anything before we let's and you can use a search up here too. Apparently, you can go search and just type in you know password, and it's going to show me all the things that have the word password in it. I guess oh, that's right. I can use this box to filter. I'm sorry, I did the wrong one. Password. That is really easy. Add a password. So I want to use a password for this PDF. Let's drag the PDF to the screen, and we're going to type in owner password. We're going to do me me me. Me, me, me. And prevent assembly of dot. Wow, it's got a lot of options too. Prevent printing. Let's try that. So um, 
Let's try that. Let's see if I can right click and print after I encrypt this with the password me, me, me. Okay, there's the document. Okay. And I'm going to right click on it. You don't, you don't see my other screen, but I'm just going to do this. Let's go to print. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you, like, well, can I open it first? Let's see. Enter a password. No, you can't open it. That's so cool. So you can decide to let it be printable, I believe, but not be able to open it. That's interesting. All right, I'm done with that. But that's a really cool feature. If you want to try this out, let me know if you want me to make some kind of tutorial video. You know, if it's about installing it, I really can't do a tutorial that's going to apply to everyone for your virtual private server because CloudRun is so easy to install and that's a whole nother, you know, involved situation to get it going. But once you have CloudRun up, you just click on an app and it installs. So I recommend trying it out. Thanks a lot for watching.